Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Everybody in. Nobody out. Everybody in. Everybody in. All right. I'm pleased to bring up this morning's uh, uh, chair, um, Sister Marva Wade from the New York State Nurses Association, a member of the Labor Campaign for Single Payer Steering Committee. Give it up for Marva. I'm going to be passing a basket later, so remember this. Remember how this is going. It is so great to see all of you here this morning. Thank you so much for coming, brothers and sisters. We try to do, you know, uh, time always is not on our side because we want to do so many things and have so many people come and give their stories and to, you know, make you believe that what we're wanting is, can be real. And in order to get that work done, you absolutely need a posse. You absolutely need an army, and this is what we do when we come together. We are raising an army, and you know, not all armies are just out to kill. Some of us are really out there to save lives. So being a nurse, <laughs> being a nurse saving lives is, you know, what I do every day and have done for more. So, <laughs> So we have an awesome panel up here today who are going to talk to you about what it is we need to do and what it is we're doing in order to make those saving lives a reality. So the first person that I'm going to introduce, he doesn't need any introduction, but we can give him one anyway. Mark Dutzik is the national coordinator of the Labor Campaign for Single Pair, our mentor and leader in so many ways. Uh, Koki Giles is the president of the California Nurses Association and vice president of National Nurses United. So Sophia Sepulveda, you go girl. I am so bad with names, I can't even pronounce my own sometimes. I'm just giving your heads up. So Sophia is the healthcare organizer for the Texas Organizing Project, all the way from Texas. I came from New York, so. I am not envious of anybody that just came from Texas, I'm just saying. <laughs> ben Day is the Executive Director of Healthcare Now. Uh, Koki wanted to go first, did you? And, uh, and Mark, Mark decided, Mark is, Mark is gonna go first. I won the coin toss here. Okay, well, good morning again, brothers and sisters. It's wonderful to see everybody here at our National Strategy Conference. We put a lot of thought and a lot of work into this and really want to recognize the work that you have all have done to move this. So we, we met uh, three years ago in New York City, in January 2017. Uh, and it was a pretty bleak moment. Trump was just about ready to be inaugurated. He was vowing to dismantle the Affordable Care Act, replace it with nothing, and dismantle a whole slew of other public programs um, that working people depend on for survival. And we had just come off a disastrous national election when our Democratic candidate vowed that we will never, ever have Medicare for all uh, in this country, that it was a waste. So today we're in a very different moment. Trump is still president and is, you know, we face catastrophic disaster if that continues much longer. But we are in a situation now where majorities of the American people consistently support Medicare for all, even when they're hammered with negative questions and messaging. Medicare for all is the litmus issue in every single presidential debate and on almost every single political campaign in this country. We have seized the terms of debate on the future of health care in this country. H.R. 1384, the Medicare for All Act, is in Congress. It's a great bill. 118 sponsors, I'm sorry to say. We lost Elijah Cummings two days ago. Elijah was a champion of health care justice. I know 
that there are people in his district who are making sure today that he will be succeeded by someone who will continue to carry the torch for uh, Medicare for All in that key congressional seat. And, and this is straight up in my world, for the first time since the mid-1990s, when my poor benighted labor movement lost its way again, uh, Unions that represent a majority of organized workers in this country have endorsed actually existing Medicare for All legislation. So this is a, this is a gigantic paradigm shift in how people have thought about the future of health care in this country. It's a huge shift in public opinion and public thinking. And it's uh, really a moment that comes rarely. I think we're kind of on the cusp of one of those magic moments that this, uh, the Irish poet Seamus Heaney described when he talked about how once in a lifetime hope and history rhyme. And this is one of those moments when hope and history just might rhyme. So we should really be proud of what brought us here, what we have accomplished, and I want to thank everybody in the room for the work that you've done, and I want to thank the organizations that sent you here, because that's the, so the core and the spine of our, mo our movement. But I also have to tell you that I'm an old union organizer. And are you clapping because I'm old or I'm an organizer? And I got to say that this feels very much like that moment in a union organizing campaign right before the boss finds out that the union is in the shop. This is very much like that moment where everybody's together, we're all excited about the future, but we have not yet experienced the